What is up, my fellow astronauts? Let me tell you why men can also benefit from oxytocin. When you hear oxytocin, you immediately think about that cuddling hormone, but it actually does a lot more than that. And it doesn't turn men into cuddly softies. It actually has a lot of pro-alpha benefits that you might be interested in. So let me tell you about it. So first up, what is oxytocin? Oxytocin is the most abundant neuropeptide in the hypothalamus area of the brain. It is also synthesized in a number of organs, including the gastrointestinal tract, heart, pregnant, intrauterine tissue, ovaries, as well as the testis, epididymis, and prostate. So it's quite interesting. It's synthesized in a bunch of other tissue apart from the hypothalamus. So here are one of the main reasons why we as men might be interested in oxytocin. It's because oxytocin increases testosterone. When they give oxytocin to animals or humans, it increases testosterone in a dose-dependent manner, and it doesn't enhance LH increased testosterone synthesis. So this means that oxytocin works on the testes to stimulate sterogenic enzymes. So it makes your LH basically more effective. And so as you can see in the graph, the more oxytocin they used, more testosterone was being produced. Here's another study showing that intranasal oxytocin slightly increased testosterone. They used about 26 IUs. And you can see how testosterone was increasing here only after about like two hours time. This was, was when testosterone started to go up, but initially progesterone peaked and then dropped. Estradiol didn't really move and then testosterone went up. So it, it's possible that the precursor progesterone is going up and then it's being converted into testosterone. And this is why testosterone is only going up later on. So nasal oxytocin can increase testosterone. In terms of DHT, oxytocin has been shown to increase 5-alpha reductase in a dose-dependent manner. But this was specifically the type 2 reductase, not the type 1. So here you can see this is control 5-alpha reductase type 2. And this was when they gave oxytocin to it. And this was the oxytocin receptor antagonist, so it blocked the effect. So oxytocin massively increased 5-alpha reductase type 2 as well. In terms of dopamine, giving oxytocin increases libido and erection. So there's a really good interconnection between oxytocin and libido. So they found that blocking, blocking the oxytocin receptor reduces the erectogenic effect. So when you take oxytocin, it helps with erections. Blocking the oxytocin receptor blunts those erectogenic effect. And then also blocking the dopamine receptor reduces the erectogenic effect of oxytocin, which means that if you take oxytocin, your dopamine goes up, right? So some of that bony enhancing effects happens through dopamine, but also Blocking the oxytocin receptor reduces the erectogenic effect of apomorphine. Apomorphine is a dopaminergic drug. So if you act on the dopamine receptor, you release oxytocin. Both by blocking the oxytocin and dopamine receptor, you block the erectogenic effect. Dopamine and oxytocin work very synergistically together to enhance mood, sexual function, erections, libido, those kind of stuff. Oxytocin has also been shown to be anabolic. It stimulates the activity of the parasympathetic nervous system, including that of the vagal nerve, leading to an increased digestive, anabolic, and restorative capacity. It increases wound healing and plasma levels of some growth factors like IGF-1 and decreases inflammation. As I mentioned, it increases IGF-1, nerve growth factor, and also fibroblast growth factor. So this was IGF-1, and here they used sodium chloride, which is just salt, and here they used oxytocin. So the, the sodium chloride was like the placebo group, and you can see that oxytocin was quite effective at increasing IGF-1 levels in the body, leading to better anabolism. And a lot of people have reported when they use l ruteri which is a compound that helps to stimulate oxytocin release, it speeds up recovery. Here's a human study where they used 24 IUs four times daily to enhance muscle mass in elderly. So you can see they actually gained muscle in grams, the oxytocin, whereas the placebo group slightly lost muscle. Oxytocin led to a significant increase in 2.25 kilograms of whole body lean mass compared to the placebo group. And this is just from intranasal oxytocin. It's pretty sweet. It also helps with fat loss. Oxytocin is lower in obese and diabetic men versus normal weight men. A single dose of 24 IU reduced caloric intake by 122 calories. The 24 IU four times daily dose for eight weeks produced about a nine kilogram weight loss. Using intranasal oxytocin, 24 IUs four times a day can help to speed up the metabolic rate and help you to lose weight. And then it's also in an animal model of obesity and diabetes, chronic oxytocin treatment led to a reduction in visceral adipose tissue inflammation 
and plasma markers of systemic inflammation, which may play a role in disease progression. Oxytocin has good fat loss benefits by enhancing their metabolic rate, reducing inflammation, lots of good stuff. Oxytocin has also been shown to be elevated in those with hypersexuality. So hypersexual men have higher levels of oxytocin. Dopamine has been observed to enhance the sexual drive and has been observed to enhance sexual drive and orgasmic quality and facilitate penile erections likely by increasing oxytocin release. Here is hypersexual patients, men. You can see their oxytocin is higher than those in the control group. So boosting oxytocin can help to enhance your libido and sexual function. It has anti-anxiety benefits because oxytocin decreases the sympathetic nervous system and increases the sympathetic nervous system tone. And very interestingly, oxytocin can be broken down into smaller fragments and those fragments are agonists to the opioid receptor and it's also an alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist. So similar to the drug clonidine, which then reduces the sympathetic nervous system. You might know the sympathetic nervous system as fight and flight, creating anxiety, jitteriness, restlessness. And so OPE lowers the sympathetic nervous system, helping against anxiety. And oxytocin is also reduced in people with PTSD. And then giving them oxytocin helps to help with those symptoms. In terms of depression, oxytocin is reduced in people with depression. Here you can see that oxytocin in serum not clinical depression, mild depression, moderate to high depression. So more severe depression, the lower oxytocin level goes. In terms of behavior, oxytocin has been shown to increase trust between individuals, in decrease amygdala activation towards fear-induced stimulation. So the amygdala is heavily involved in fear and panic. So it decreases that activity. It improves recognition of social cues. So it makes you a more social being, like less autistic, so to speak. It increases the gaze directed towards the eye regions of others. And I know a lot of people, they struggle with eye contact. They feel insecure and I don't want to make eye contact. So boosting oxytocin can help you to make better eye contact, not in a creepy way, hopefully. It also increases the, the duration of eye contact. So obviously, if you want to be speaking to someone and make a connection with them, you want to be doing eye contact with them, not in a creepy way, but oxytocin can help in that regard. And it also increases social salience. Oxytocin has been shown to prevent brain aging. Sexual activity, by its stimulating impact on the oxytonergic activity in many regions of the brain, has the capacity to delay the onset of age-related cerebral decay. Oxytocin is helpful against brain aging, and then being sexually active increases oxytocin and is healthy to the brain. Be sexually active. This may also postpone frailty and age-associated diseases in the body. Oxytocin is really beneficial for you. Finally, oxytocin possesses neuroplastic property that may be applied to expand sexual reward. Other benefits of oxytocin in include it might help against migraine. It's, and, and it's also been shown that central oxytonergic neurons influence gastric motility. So it can help against constipation and against diarrhea as well. Here are how we are going to increase oxytocin. l ruderi Pistachio nuts, fenugreek, zinc, lithium, melanotan 2. A lot of people don't know about this, but melanotan 2 increases oxytocin, dopamine, and the melanocortin system. That's how it enhances libido and erections. Thunder God Divine, because it contains a compound that excites the exotonergic neurons. High in ambient temperature, so this is probably why you feel better when you feel warmer. I can speak from personal experience that when I my body temperature is cold, I tended to feel, and this was when I was hypothyroid, I tended to feel more anxious and more depressed. And when my body temperature was higher, whether it be from a shower or sitting in the hot car, I was I would just feel it better, like better mood, less anxiety, like all of those kind of stuff. So I can definitely testify to higher ambient temperatures making you feel better. And then also the serotonin 1A receptor activation potently releases oxytocin. And this is likely also why 1A agonists help with penile sensitivity is because of that release in oxytocin. Here are a few of the 1A agonists. We have Hesperidin, Cat's Claw, Silk Tree, Nobilitin, Ginkgo Globa, CBD, Adenosine. These can help to activate the 1A receptor without negative effects help to release your oxytocin. Now, I would not specifically start with adenosine as that can be on the sedating side, of course. And here are some of the dangers of alcohol and weed. Repeated administration of low-dose THC causes downregulation of the oxytocin receptor expression and the diminished oxytocin 
innervation in the nucleus accumbens of rats, and then chronic ethanol exposure was associated with degradation of oxytocin-containing neurons in the hypothalamus of both humans and rats. Both weed and ethanol abuse can be detrimental to the oxytocin system and then cause detriments because you end up with lower levels of oxytocin in the long run. And here's also the downsides of drugs. Recent evidence suggests that popular party drugs such as MDMA and GHB may preferentially activate the brain oxytocin systems to produce their characteristic pro-social and pro-sexual effects. This is why these drugs can be so addictive because they cause like a massive release of oxytocin. You feel really good. You feel really pro-sexual. But what happens after oxytocin peaks, the drug works out of your system your oxytocin drops below baseline. So this is why you have that craving to use the drug again, because now you're, this is your baseline, your oxytocin is below baseline, and you feel really terrible. You crave to have that oxytocin again, and then you, then you create this feed-forward cycle of drug abuse. All right, so there you have it. There's really a lot of benefits to using oxytocin for men. Personally, the way I would go about it is just to make sure you eat a nutrient-dense diet. You get zinc because zinc is essential for the activation of oxytocin. And then I would just use l because it has a bunch of benefits and is really effective at increasing oxytocin. That's kind of like the simple thing that I would do to maximize my oxytocin. But you can stack multiple things together to start to maximize your oxytocin. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something new, and I will check you in the next one. Cheers, guys.